Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. And yes, I'm officially uh, kicking off the uh, fall TV season reviews uh, right here and now. Uh, I know things got a little thin during the summer. Um, I, well, anyway, I'm going to make a channel update video pretty soon to let you guys know all uh, the details about that and what we can look forward to here in the future. But anyway, uh, Riverdale is back. Uh, I, I was actually caught a little bit by surprise on this one. Um, I, I forgot about the date, and it all the Riverdale, the the new the first season here, uh, the episode of the new season uh, for season three, Labor Day, uh, actually dropped like the day after I got back from a vacation in Tokyo. Uh, now, if you've uh, this is your first time finding me, or if you've forgotten, I actually live in Japan. Um, my job, uh, my workplace, we had a, a four-day holiday, and I decided to take that time to go on a trip to Tokyo, and I had a fantastic time there. And um, one advantage of living in Japan is that I get to watch Riverdale on Netflix, which uh, I turn on the Japanese subtitles so I can kind of uh, practice my Japanese at the same time. Uh, and it just sort of makes the uh, the whole experience a little bit more fun. So uh, I will occasionally throw in a comment or two about how the series is translated into Japanese. Um, in general, it's translated reasonably well. I mean, my Japanese is far from perfect, and I just need to get that out front. But I can understand enough to say it's like basically like, yeah, they got the idea across, but a lot of the flavor of the English is lost, but that's a pretty common occurrence when things get translated from any language to another. It's just uh, the nature of the beast. But anyway, uh, Riverdale is back. I am so hyped. I, I absolutely love just how insane this show can be. Um, oh god, and I have a feel like they're not they're not holding back. It's right up front that this is gonna be just as utterly bonkers as everything else on the show. Um, you know, I saw this interesting comment on Reddit where uh, a guy was saying, like, has this show just completely given up on being a serious drama? And my thought on that was just like, dude, this is the show has always been very, very clear that it's a CW show. And yes, it does qualify as a drama, but it qualifies as a CW style drama which carries in it by its nature a certain amount of absurdity. I mean, this is a show that, you know, really runs on that sort of um, younger audience demographic with stuff like Vampire Diaries and Legends of Tomorrow and Arrow. And, you know, I mean, it caters to a certain type of audience. And if you're here looking for something that's made in the same way of like House of Cards, Lord oh Lord, are you are, are, are you in the wrong are you in the wrong place? Riverdale has I think always been very clear as to exactly what sort of series it has been it, it is intended to be. I mean, granted, it took a few episodes to really find its legs, but basically, like this insane bonkers. CW version of Archie, which is exactly what we've always gotten, and that's why it's great. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get right into it. So, um, in general, I thought this was a good episode. Uh, the whole thing with Archie's trial, I like that this isn't something that they were going to drag out. That was one of my really big fears. I mean, I know some people said they were kind of thinking that this was going to go on for a long time. Then it's like somewhere around the mid-season finale, the trial was going to be wrapped up, and then Archie can sort of get out there and really start focusing on dealing with Hiram. Well, no, they, they completely pulled the rug out from under us. Now, a lot of people were saying Archie was stupid to take the deal. Well, it certainly wasn't a fantastic decision. But I actually kind of understand where Archie's coming from. One, he doesn't want to put his family and friends through this emotional ringer that has been going on uh, a second time. I mean, look at what happens with Betty. She's, by her own admission, she's barely been sleeping. She's messing around with prescription pills. 
I mean, it's this is taking an enormous toll on his parents, not to mention his other friends, his relationship with Veronica. And honestly, I think Archie was probably shocked that he even was able to end up with a hung jury. If there was a hung jury, it means that Hiram wasn't tampering with the jury. He just sort of stood back and let things take its course. But, and you have to think that, this, that Archie, you know, dumb as he might be sometimes, realizes that, uh-oh, Hiram let things just sort of go take their natural course. And this is what happened. If there's a second time around, he's probably not going to stand by and just take his chances that Archie might get off scot-free. I mean, he was told, your chances of this uh, working the way you want are 50-50. Uh-uh. There, that's not happening, and Archie knows it. So he, I, I'm sure Archie is thinking, okay, I almost got away with it this time, but next time Hiram's going to find something, you know, get something on the jury. He's going to interfere some way, shape, or form, and he's going to make sure that I'm sent away for a long time. If I take this deal, I'm out in two years. And that was the deal. He has to go to juvie for two years. He's starting his junior year. He gets out there when he gets out of juvie when he's 18, 19 years old. So yeah, he would be a guy who pled guilty to manslaughter, but you know, 18, 19 years old, he can still kind of get on with his life. And basically, this is not great for his friends, but two years is still a lot better than a, a normal stretch for murder or manslaughter or whatever it would be. So honestly, he took what would really was the least bad choice. And again, if he really thought that there was a chance that he could get away with it, that Hiram wasn't going to screw with that trial, he might have uh, taken that. But I'm sure that was what was going on in Archie's head. Um, now speaking of Hiram, uh, he's in, he continues to be in a lot of ways like the most fascinating character on the show, even though I absolutely hate him. And this isn't a knock against the actor or the writers or anything. Hiram is designed to be a character who is a villain. He is the big bad of Riverdale here in the series and has been so before the comics, particularly like the Archie Married Life comics, which incidentally are really, really good. Uh, but anyway, I he says, well, first, when Veronica is getting on his case and basically begging him to sort of let Archie go, he just sits there and plays dumb. He's like, oh, hey, I, I don't know I have anything to do with, uh, you know, what's going on with Archie. This is just, you know, stuff. And then at the very end, he just sort of drops all pretense and says to her flat out, like, uh, what, you think I did this because Archie came in here and threatened me? No, I did this to punish you for choosing Archie over me. I'm your blood. Now, this is enormously hypocritical of Hiram because, you know, he and Archie did the whole blood oath thing together. Archie helped Hiram, you know, when those other gangsters basically had him against the wall and um, really went to bat for him against his own father, which Archie points out it was the biggest mistake of his life. So, oh, you know, never mind the fact that Fred uh, was basically almost murdered on Hiram's orders. So, yeah, uh, Hiram acting as if blood, at least in that sense, has any real meaning for him is absurd. But of course, what he's really talking about is his own biological blood. Veronica. Although, you can't help but wonder, what exactly is Hiram's game plan here? It's like, okay, I want to punish Veronica. I want to hurt her for choosing Archie over me. Well, he succeeds in this, and he succeeds in it quite spectacularly, where Veronica just basically says to him, you know what, as far as I'm concerned, you're not my father anymore. She disowns her own father. And I really like that little moment after she said that, where Hiram is just sort of standing there and has this sort of like... Oh, well, that didn't really work out the way I'd hoped, kind of look. But again, what what was his goal there? Uh, to punish Veronica, yeah, but how was this going to help him in any way, shape, or form? If he had sort of played it like, okay, well, I'll help out Archie, but, but here's the thing. 
the one time I think Hiram wasn't BSing was when he said, I can't help Archie. Now we think he's just doing this to torment Veronica, but I don't think that's the case. And I'll tell you why. Think about this little coalition that Hiram's got around him. You know, Penny Peabody, the sheriff, the ghoulies. He lets Archie go. He lets him off the hook for this whole thing. He looks weak in those people's eyes. And you really think that somebody like Penny Peabody or the sheriff or, well, the ghoulies aren't smart enough but to do anything like that, but they're definitely enough, strong enough to cause him some serious trouble. And remember, Hiram's just come back from the brink of having uh, everything that he cares about lost because of you know his issues with the other gangsters. He's finally on the rebound. But he's surrounded by people who, if he looks weak, will not hesitate to stab him in the back. And he knows he's still in a somewhat vulnerable position. I mean, remember, <laughs> it hasn't even been two years since he was sitting in a cell himself. So Hiram is in kind of a tricky position. And like you said last season, in a lot of ways, Archie is the heart of Riverdale. He lets Archie go the best friend of Jughead, whom the Ghoulies and Penny Peabody hate. Somebody who's pretty tight with Kevin Keller, whose dad, uh, the, sh the crooked sheriff replaced. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, never mind that he just freaking hates Fred Andrews, who, you know, he had to play dirty against to get his wife elected mayor of Riverdale. Uh-uh. Hiram cannot show weakness in the case of good old Archie Andrews. Never mind what happened with his daughter. So yeah, the, when he said, I can't, that was, I think, the one time he was genuinely being truly honest. There's just too much at stake for him to let Archie go. Never mind the fact that, you know, okay, he's not the smartest knife in the, sharp, sharpest knife in the drawer, but Archie has proved himself to be surprisingly resilient. And more than that, He's somebody that people are drawn to, that will rally around, that people will stick their necks out for. And look what happens. And this is exactly what I said would happen at the end of last season. Fred, ex-Sheriff Keller, FP, they're all like, okay, we got to take down Hiram no matter what. His mom and Mayor, ex-Mayor McCoy, still seriously top-notch lawyers who are in Archie's corner. Josie, she tries to help Archie out. Now, they yeah, had a little bit of a rough relationship at the start, but I think it's kind of shown over time that Josie's at least on cool terms with Archie. Betty, Veronica, and Jughead are will basically willing to utterly walk through fire with him for him. Reggie, the Bulldogs, and the football team, and God only knows how many other people at Riverdale High are for Archie's friends. And again, they'd be really willing to go that extra mile to help him out. And Archie, Archie knows Hiram. He knows how he, how he, he understands Hiram uh, to a reasonable degree. You know, he's seen Hiram weak. And a guy like Hiram can't stand something like that. So all of these things factoring together make Archie, as amazing as it sounds, a real threat to Hiram. And that's what it is. Archie is the heart of Riverdale. And all these people who are willing to go that extra mile for him, to rally around him, they're ultimately what's going to bring Hiram and Penny and the sheriff and the ghoulies down. Hiram is basically trying to kill the soul of Riverdale. And that soul is embodied by Archie. And Hiram knows this. But he doesn't truly understand the, the power that Archie has. He understands that Archie is a threat. And this is ultimately because Hiram is an extremely selfish man. The reason why he's, you know, doing all this stuff to Veronica is that it's not just that he's it's his daughter, 
Veronica is an extension of himself, and having her turn against him is something he just can't bear. And I, I kind of was interested, really, in uh, Hermione's comments this episode, where she basically says, like, I can't turn really turn against Hiram. You, Veronica, he would never hurt. Me, I don't have that luxury. And then she goes on to say the whole thing, like, I'm not his puppet, I'm his prisoner. Which, uh, I'm sorry, Hermione, I, I do have a certain degree of sympathy for you, but that's bullshit. Okay, if she's his puppet, and she, or she's his prisoner, then boy oh boy did she ever have blow the greatest opportunity to get away from this guy forever when he was sitting in prison. But what did Hermione do? She worked hard to try to get him out. No, I don't think Hermione's lying. I think she believes what she says. And Veronica did note in la the other season that he's never heard his parent, her par she's never heard her parents say that they love each other. So I really think that Hermione really was just a necessary tool for Hiram. I mean, you want to have children, well, you're going to need... Uh, a certain degree of cooperation from a woman. But again, let's look at all the things that Hermione's done. When Hiram was in prison, she kind of started a thing going on with Fred. Ultimately, she goes back to her husband and works to throw Fred under a bus so that she can be mayor of Riverdale, basically because that's what Hiram wants. Um... <clears throat> And if this is Hiram is such a rotten guy, why did she marry him in the first place? Why? Because she's some girl from a small town like Riverdale that wanted wanted the high life. She wanted that life of luxury and uh, you know all that. So she ends up marrying a guy who's got that money, but oh yeah, he's a mob boss. If you're so ethical all of a sudden, Hermione, why did you marry a guy like this in the first place? Never mind the fact that it basically was spelled out that she's the consigliere, however the hell you say that, the right-hand man of Hiram, the one that goes out there and makes sure the dirty work gets done, which in last season was more than a little bit implied, could have involved throwing Archie off a cliff. You know, Archie, the son of the guy she was dating kind of in season one, who was basically her high school boyfriend. So, yeah, she seemed to be totally willing to let Andre throw Archie off a cliff if he'd have uh, not passed Hiram's little test. So, you know, Hermione doesn't get to stand there and pretend that her hands are clean. And then she's just shifting all of this blame onto Hiram? Bullshit. Okay, you don't get to be both the right-hand man of the mob boss and his his prisoner, his victim. Bullshit, Hermione. And again, it was said that she was basically this consigliere then that, you know, arranging the deaths of other people would certainly have been something that she probably did in the past. So, again, Hermione's basically just basically sold her soul to the devil and is now whining that it didn't work out very well for her. So, yeah. But. But, 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 but. When it comes to taking down extraordinarily powerful people in real world history, one of the ways these sort of things all only succeed is if there's someone extremely close to that person who's basically willing to stab them in the back. Well, Hiram's going to be on his guard against Veronica. Hermione? Mm -mm. Hiram is quite convinced that he has her completely under her, his thumb. I mean, last season, like when Small Potatoes broke into the apartment and tried to kill Veronica and Hermione, that was obviously a serious, this can't go on moment for Hermione. So, yeah one way or another uh eventually this season she's totally going to help uh stab him in the back and that's going to be one of the real etu brute moments 
but I think this show is making a serious misstep in trying so hard to make Hermione seem sympathetic. She, she is not somebody with clean hands and trying to portray her as some sort of victim when she really, from what I can see, knew what she was signing up for and is now just sort of like, oh, there might be some real consequences for all these things I've spent at least the past 16 years of my life doing. Yeah, screw you, Hermione. Uh, let's see. I loved FP giving Archie the Southside Serpent's tattoo and uh, giving him that advice about prison. And especially the part where he talks about like the mental side of it. Uh, that's actually in keeping with like what people like Nelson Mandela have said about uh, you know being in prison. Um, nothing particularly particular to say about the whole thing with uh, Moose and Kevin. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, the whole thing with Dilton Doily and this whole Gargoyle King role-playing game. It's like something out of the whole like D&D &D Darkest Dungeon insanity from the 1980s. Uh, hard to tell where that's going to go. Uh, I do like that Betty was basically not taking any of her sister or mom's BS about what's obviously a cult. But on the other hand, her Polly and uh, her mom... Polly and Alice did make a reasonable point, like, um, Betty, you're lying and, you know, abusing prescription drugs, uh, and, you know, that's not good. I mean, fair enough. Um, now, I'm sure there were some people who, uh, and I saw it online, there's some people who were like, what the hell with the whole fire supernatural stuff with the floating babies at the end? Um, yeah. Uh, apparently the producers have said we're not really going to go full supernatural. This is, I'm sure, ultimately going to turn out to be just Betty hallucinating due to uh, lack of sleep and popping God only knows how many uppers. Um, which, you know, okay, I'm fine. I, I kind of like that they've only ever sort of implied creepy supernatural stuff on the edge of uh, Riverdale, I kind of think that actually suits the atmosphere more. Oh wow, I'm getting quite a lot of messages on my phone. Um, sorry about that. It's a little distracting. <clears throat> um, anyway, getting back into things. Definitely liked that little conversation with Archie and Reggie. Oh, man. Uh, Cheryl. Um, wow. Could her entrance into the, the diner have been any more fan service -y? I mean... Ooh. But I did like that conversation that she had with Tony. That was very heartfelt. Of course, it also seems kind of strange given that Cheryl actually tried to blackmail Archie last season, which, if you watched my reviews of that, pissed me off endlessly. But okay, we'll uh, we'll let Cheryl. Uh, we'll just we'll just write that off as sort of a moment in which Cheryl's naturally bitchy nature got the be better of her. But again, still, she was trying. She was trying to blackmail the guy who had saved her life, which was just like unbelievably shitty. But, okay, well, I guess I'll have to let that go to some degree. But her, her lamenting that there's not, that she couldn't really help Archie, that, that speaks well. I, I, I think that Tony has been a good influence on her. And speaking of which, um, well, in terms of Archie anyway, uh, I really like how during the court uh, they sort of used all of that as a way to highlight both the positive and negative things that Archie has done over the last uh, couple seasons. So that was nicely done. Um, definitely liked getting to see Penny Peabody again. Uh, again, I absolutely hate this woman so much. She's such a soulless, evil witch. Um, but definitely liked seeing Mordecai, who's the leader of the ghoulies, get... Uh, the Hunger Games treatment from uh, from Cheryl. 
Um, no, like the whole thing, like, okay, Jug, you know, it's going to be another war Jughead. No, you came back and got your dog, so now it's going to be war again. Well, this was inevitable. Uh, Penny has definitely not forgotten about the time that Jughead literally carved a chunk out of her flesh and has just basically been looking for an excuse to kill him. And she made, like, was not, not holding back. It's like, oh, okay, well, I've got you here and there's a whole army of the guys right behind me, so I guess we'll just kill you right now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just can't wait for Jughead to finally uh, deal with her. And, no, I don't mean, I don't think Jughead's going to go and kill her. That's just not who he is. But finding some way to take her down, that I think he will do. And frankly, I really am surprised that Jughead hasn't kind of pointed out to the ghoulies, like, you do realize that Penny is basically useless in a fight. I mean, come on, do you really think Penny's ever really gone out there, put her, you know, put some skin in the game in terms of taking physical risks to, uh, you know, fight the ghoulies' enemies? No. Penny talks. That's the only thing she's good at. And... I think that's something that would actually kind of resonate with the ghouls. It's like, well, yeah, when have you ever physically really put yourself at risk? You send us out to go and take the risks, and then you reap the, the most rewards. What, what do you really do for us, Penny? I mean, granted, she's still an attorney, but that seems a little thin at this point, when she's really more or less just, that's just kind of a occasionally useful thing to cover up her being a drug dealer. So there, I think, is a notable weakness. I mean, if you can get Penny away from her ghouly thugs, she's nothing. So uh, I think, like I said, if you can kind of make that point to the ghoulies, they're the kind of vicious people for, it's like, hey, you're right, this lady's completely useless in a, in a fight. If we really decide we've had enough of her, well, there's nothing she can really physically do to stop us. And uh, having the ghoulies turn on her would be a pretty satisfying way, I think, for Penny to get what's ultimately going to come up, what, what she's uh, got coming. But, I don't know. I kind of feel like the, just the nature that Jughead has, I think just destroying her, you know, as a public person and more or less being dragged off to ch to jail, I think uh, that, I think, for Jughead would probably be perhaps a more satisfying conclusion. Because you got to imagine, somebody like Penny probably has more than a few uh, enemies in jail. And, uh, yeah, guys, well, I've been at this for nearly half an hour, so I think it's time to, to wrap this up. Uh, so... Uh, as always, please comment, rate, subscribe, and of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Until next time, take care and have a good one.